Hey, what's going on? Luke here, and I'm here to talk about State of Origin Game 1 and just where it all went wrong for the New South Wales Blues. Now, I'm probably going to just one-take this, sort of just speak from the heart, just rant a little bit. I'm a very frustrated Blues supporter, as are probably majority of New South Wales. I don't think you'll find any New South Wales fans with, with too many positive things to say about last night's game. Obviously, well done to Queensland. Congratulations. You got the job done against all odds once again. However, I will say, when the with odds were stacked against them, it just, it just felt like it was coming. It didn't feel like New South Wales were ever safe. And it felt like what ended up happening, meaning the, the Hammers try that put them in in front, and then obviously ended up scoring through Munster, the whole Collins um, bomb catch, pass at the Munster, wrap up the game. Um, you could just sense it was coming. New South Wales supporters, we've been through this uh, time and time again. We've been through it multiple times. Uh, you, you just kind of... Uh, you learn to expect these sort of things from New South Wales, and in particular, these Brad Fittler coached teams. Uh... In one word for New South Wales, lackluster was probably the word I'd use in regards to their performance. And essentially the title of this video, I'm calling it like what went wrong with the New South Wales blue side. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. If you're a Queensland supporter, like I said, congratulations. This video isn't really going to be talking about, you know, how good Queensland was. And I think, I think even like Queensland fans will say, Queensland weren't amazing. They weren't like a great, a great team. Oh, sorry, like, I'm not talking about like the actual individuals. I'm just talking about how they played. They didn't play particularly well. They were just gritty and they did what Queensland do. They stay in the game. And, and I find any time that Queensland stay in the game, they seem to win it. And New South Wales, when they win, they need to blow them out. Like they need to make sure there's absolutely no doubt. If the game's on the line going into the deep end of the game, New South Wales seem to really, really struggle. And uh, look, that just seems to be a common theme for New South Wales and Queensland in general, but especially as of recent times. Now, I'm going to talk about Brad Fittler first and foremost. Uh, he is someone that I don't rate as a coach. I never rate it as a coach. He was a shit NRL coach for the Roosters. He's been shit for State of Origin for New South Wales. Uh, you know, he's he's sort of been masked by the fact that he's won a couple series here and there. And even a couple of years ago, I think I did a similar sort of video where I talked about Brad Fittler and how, you know, they win one series and everybody kind of forgets that we didn't play very well. Now, New South Wales sort of fans, and Brad Fittler fans, I will say, in the media, they love to think back to, what was it, 2020, when the game was completely different, um, when, you know, Tantra Boyevich, Latrell Mitchell absolutely carved up, Tedesco was carving up, Nathan Cleary didn't carve up, but he played probably his best series, uh, Jerome Lyons first year, uh, the one where we put like 50 on Queensland, and then like in, in the first two games, we put a score on them, wrapped up the series, and then Queensland came out and beat us in game three. Now, I feel like that masks a lot of the problems for New South Wales at the time, and then also going forward. So, I said this when I did my tips and predictions video. I've said this in any sort of video regarding State of Origin, regarding New South Wales. I said that there's too much too much reliance on the Penrith system. And obviously, the Penrith system works in NRL. They've gone back to back. There's no doubt about that. I'm not here to say the system doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't work in State of Origin. And I think the biggest example of that is when you look at the players. Let's look, take Nathan Cleary, for example. This guy, you, you can make arguments as being the best player in the world. And I think many people would say that. Many people would say he's been dominating the NRL for you know a number of years at this point. I think of Nathan Cleary when he chucks in that Sky Blues jersey, when he plays in New South Wales, or even the, you know, the Navy Blue. How, yeah, okay, that's a whole other story. But Nathan Cleary is definitely not the same caliber of player when he plays NRL to State of Origin. And I don't know if that's because there's more attention on him, if there's more pressure. I don't know what the reason is, but we don't need to know what the reason is. We just need to look at the facts. And that is Nathan Cleary does not deliver for New South Wales. And for year after year, we had Mitchell Pearce copping criticism. You know, we should put this guy in, we should put that guy in. At the time, like when Mitchell Pearce was the halfback, there wasn't even any real sort of other second options. I mean, we had Hawkinson and obviously he came in, got the job done, but he was busted literally the same season that they ended up, you know, getting the, getting the victory with him. So his reign didn't last pretty much due to injury. Whereas Nathan Cleary, there are other options. We've got Nico Hines sitting on the bench doing absolutely nothing. And then when he comes on, he gets chucked into a position he's never played. You've got Mitchell Moses there as well. Then at a stretch, you can also move some 5.8s into halfback. And, you know, you can sort of do some shuffling around. But there are other options for the halfback spot. And yet, it's the one position that just seems to get locked in year after year. And, and to me, it just doesn't make sense. And I'm not even particularly thinking it's like Nathan Cleary. I'm sort of thinking it's just, it's just the system. Brad Fittler is like one of the laziest sort of coaches I've ever seen in terms of state of origin. For a team that picks club combinations and picks players purely because they play with each other and they have understanding of each other, how do we look like we have no idea? How, did, how does a team have no game plan and have no idea what to do despite them getting picked because they know how to play with each other? 
I don't understand that. So on one hand, Brad Filler is picking club combinations. He's going with he's going with guys that you know are there because they they have combos and they have set plays and all that sort of stuff, and they don't have to learn them in camp. Yet when we see New South Wales play, and this is over the whole span of his his career as the coach, we have yet to see them look like they have any sort of cohesion or any sort of chemistry in the slightest. And you know who's been the best players? The guys who don't play in the pen of system. They've always looked good. And Liam Martin is an exception because he was outstanding. And I just want to touch on Liam Martin for a second. Uh, a thing that I've been sort of going over in my head is that for a long time now, and this is something that I think Queensland do really, really well, New South Wales don't pick origin players. Uh, and that you're probably thinking, what the hell is an origin player? But I'm thinking of those guys who you know are just aggressive in your face. You know, not the best players, but necessarily. But they are guys who are going to give it their all, and they're going to be aggressive, and they're going to run. They're going to run with a bit of passion, and a little bit of fire. And Liam Martin did that when he came off the bench last night, and it's ironic that you know all the club combos and all that sort of stuff. And, and the one combination that did actually work was the one that they didn't even start. Uh, it just it makes zero sense to me. But um, yeah, Liam Martin was running with. Fire. He was he was hitting hard. He was driving players back. He showed energy and he just showed passion for the jersey. And that's the one thing that I think New South Wales have been lacking for a long, long time. I mean, I say it's the one thing. They've been lacking a lot of things. But uh, just think back to the previous sides. There's no guys who you sort of, you, you think of like, all right, well, he's a New South Wales player. There's a lot of guys who, you know, come in and out of the squad. They're here one year. They, they're not there the next. Um, you know, they sort of, a lot of workhorses in the side. And I think that's a big problem as well is that we've got a lot of players who are just those workhorse players who are just, who all play very, very similar. Uh, and then we expect them to come into New South Wales and take on a fiery Queensland side and actually do something. Uh, think of a player who actually packs a punch or, you know, breaks the line a little bit. Basically, what I'm saying is try and think of anyone who's who's done a big hit uh, in, in recent years for New South Wales. You've got some absolute big bops, your junior parlors and, and all that sort of stuff. You get picked it, um, year in, year out. Yet think of someone who's absolutely smashed someone. Gone are the days of New South Wales sides having your Greg Bird and your Paul Gullins. And I'm talking about an era that wasn't even like successful. They just they still had the the uh, they still had the origin players. And I think for that era, yes, they didn't win, but um, they were up against probably like the greatest side of all time, and they still were competitive. Whereas this side, this New South Wales side, we have generational players in this side. Some quote-unquote superstars, um, some all-time greats, some would say. And we're coming up against a Queensland side who, they obviously have a lot of good players, but in terms of talent, like if you went onto a rugby league video game and you looked at overalls, the New South Wales side, every year for like majority of Brad Fittler's reign, we've had the much better side. And at times, we've clearly had the best side. Queensland have been picking guys out of New South Wales. Queensland have been picking guys out of reserve grade, dead set. And we were still losing to them. And it just, it's frustrating for me because it doesn't seem to be many changes or the changes that they, they make, they aren't the right ones. Now, let's look at the actual side itself. You analyze the side, the back line, right? Obviously, Latrell Mitchell wasn't there, but for the most part, that was the back line I would have went with. Even Crichton. I thought Crichton was half decent. Doesn't pass the ball too much, but I don't think he really had too many opportunities where he could actually pass the ball. Now, you have Tom Trebojevic parked out on the right-hand side. Um, you got Josh Adekar out there as well. They did not touch the ball. Like, I can't really recall any times where they got any decent ball. And to have a guy as talented as Tom Trebojevic, a generational all-timer, Dalian medal winner, I just, I don't understand how you have these like premiership winning halves. You have, you know, all these club combinations. Coruscant's there. You've got Isaiah Yar. I'll get on Isaiah Yar a later day and Coruscant. But I don't understand how you have all these superstars, all these attacking weapons, especially a guy like Josh Adokar. You literally have a play just in, in the books whenever you need it where you can just kick to him and he'll just chase. Like that's, that's how easy it is to Josh Adokar. Find a time when he actually got any little bit of space at all. Now, I know they're going to talk about the hammer sort of burning him on the edge. But that was a bad miss by Nico Hines, and that one's on Hines. And then Tedesco was absolutely dreadful, and Tedesco's been quite lackluster this season. He's sort of, I think he's he's on the decline big time. But uh, look, I'll give Teddy the benefit of the doubt because he's been there in the past, and I don't think he's the reason why we lost, but he definitely didn't contribute in a positive way. The fence was pretty was pretty shit, if we're being honest, missed um, some pretty bad tackles. And then also, just in attack, I feel like he just he just doesn't offer anything in attack. He runs the ball a lot, makes a lot of meters. Kind of reminds me of Hayes Perrin for the Bulldogs. Stats-wise, it looks good. And you look at the stats and you go, God, this guy must be good. And then you actually watch it and you're like, all right, he's running sideways a lot. Um, you know, there's opportunities. He doesn't pass the ball. There was an opportunity for Josh Adokar to go over and score in the corner. He ran it himself. He got held up. You see what I'm saying here. Tedesco, I think, is past it. Is he still... 
the best option overall. He probably is, and I, you know, they're going to talk about Dylan Edwards. It's just ironic to me that, for me, we need to get away from the Penrith system and they want to bring in Dylan Edwards. Uh, I think he's a perfect example of someone, in my opinion, who if you brought him in, we're just we're going for the whole Penrith system. And, you know, we've seen the guys who are actually better than Dylan Edwards, in my opinion, for the Panthers come into this New South Wales side and not be able to do it. So why would Edwards be as influential as any of the other ones. I, just, I don't understand that. I think Latrell or Tommy are the ones you go to full back and then, you know, maybe Burton comes in or something like that. But um, Latrell is going to be a big loss. He definitely is. But I think Latrell is a big loss. And this is my biggest point that I think, you know, just thinking about New South Wales in general is we win when Latrell and Tommy play. And the reason being for me is the fact that even despite the coaching or lack of coaching and despite the lack of cohesion and attacking, like find a set when New South Wales actually looked half decent. You can't do it. And that's over like the last five years. But you can find moments of brilliance from Latrell Mitchell just barging his way over close to the line or Tom Trebojevic making a break. You can just find little little acts of individual brilliance. Tedesco's been a good one at that too in previous years. Just people who can turn nothing to something. But uh, obviously Latrell not being there that was a huge loss and a huge concern for me because I was like, well, how are we going to score? Because, you know, Tommy can do it, but obviously they didn't end up giving Tommy the ball. But, uh, like, Latrell's there. He can just bite his way over. If, if all else fails, he can just do that. And quite frankly, that's probably the only way we're going to score. Uh, when New South Wales scored, Liam Martin hit a hole that was brilliant. That was, that was fantastic. The second try probably, you can argue, shouldn't have been a try. And the third try was from a kick. Just very, very lucky. There was no set plays. There was no nothing. So... Just all, all this, all this picking the Penrith players and picking the Penrith system, and you know, trying to play like Penrith at Origin level, it hasn't worked this game. It didn't work last year. It didn't work in previous years. When New South Wales have won a series, they've been up against some pretty, some pretty poor Queensland sides, and it's always come down to the wire, apart from one series where they they blew them out. But every other series has always been close, and you look on paper, and it shouldn't be close, but it is. And I think it's due to poor coaching. Uh, they've got lucky at times. They scored some lucky tries. And obviously, Queensland definitely have some luck go their way at times. But that, that's just how footy is. You're going to get some, some good and bad luck. But the one thing that is consistent is Brad Fittler. And he's just team selections are just all over the shop. I just... I, I don't understand it. Um, I thought, like, say, for example, you bring in Tyson Frizzell. I think that's a good move considering the back row options. But then, you know, like, Pengai comes in. I, I thought Pengai was quite good. Um, but then you have Payne Haas, who plays like 30 minutes. I, I, I don't understand that. I really don't understand it. You have a guy who can play the whole 80. Uh, as You know, you would say he's probably the best prop in the game, and he doesn't even play half the game. I, just, I don't understand. Six interchanges, two out of a possible eight. Um, Nico Hines on the bench there. For, for what? I don't understand it. I said this in the lead-up. I said, what's the point of Nico Hines being there? They were going to bring him on at dummy half, but it's again, it's another position he's never, ever played. Why would you chuck a guy essentially on debut into a position he has never played. Like, you know, it's one thing for him to, you know, maybe he's come through the ranks in that position or he's played a little bit in reserve grade or... No, I, I don't think Nico Hines has just, period, has never played hooker and they're going to chuck him on there. It's just, I, I don't understand it. And then we saw New South Wales got found out, essentially lost the game because Tommy went off and they had to chuck in Nico Hines. I said Matt Burton's a better option. He can cover more positions and they go with Nico Hines because... They wanted to have him in the side, but they didn't want to start him. So either like you start him or you don't pick him. Him off the bench, it just doesn't work. Even for the Storm, in the grand final when they won, he didn't even come on. They're going to talk about him being a great utility for the Storm. I think that's kind of revisionist history. Ryan Papenhausen was very good. Nico Hines was good when he got an opportunity to start. I can't really think of too many times Nico Hines came off the bench and and was like a star for the Storm. It was when he got his opportunity when there was injuries and he actually started and he played fullback. Um, that's sort of when he made his mark. Uh, just, I'm getting frustrated here. I, there was a thread on Twitter. There's a thread on Twitter. Um, I, I wish I could tell you what it was, but if you're on Twitter, you'd see it. Um, and it went over all the plays that Nathan Cleary and Jerome Lemoy and Isaiah Yo all butchered. And I, Isaiah Yo, um, he's someone I want to just touch on. I won't go on too long. I feel like this video is sort of dragging on a little bit, but... Um, Isaiah Yo is someone who is another one, kind of like Nathan Cleary. He gets picked because Penrith are killing it, and they go, well, Penrith are killing it. It makes sense. we got to pick him. They're the team in form. Um, we got to chuck him in. Isaiah Yo, to me, offers nothing instead of Origin. He's a link man, but in Origin, you don't need a link man. I, I said this earlier. I said New South Wales lack those guys who pack a punch, who can break the line, who can you sort of just you know get an offload away, something like that. 
As Adio doesn't do that, he's not that sort of player. You can get away with that NRL level. It works well. The game's a lot slower. You've got a lot more time to make decisions. They say he's a great decision maker. He's got the, the mind of a half, whatever. The truth is, he's not a half. Otherwise, he'd be wearing the number seven. He'd be wearing the number six, you know what I mean? We don't need a guy whose predominant feature is he's a ball player. And, you know, the same can be said about your junior polos and such. Tavita Penguin Jr. has an offload. Obviously, he tried it, led to a try. Uh, for Queensland, that is. All these guys who they come out and they play their club footy style and they go, wow, great, like can't wait to get the offloads and you know the ball playing. Then they, they chuck on an origin jersey and it doesn't work. And I don't know why they keep trying it. Look at Queensland. They don't pick guys because they can do flashy plays uh, or, or you know club combinations. Try and find a time where Queensland picked a side based off a club combination. Now, though, they got very lucky that the Storm combination was just there, but they were just picking the best players and they just happened to play for the, the same club. New South Wales, since Laurie Daly, right? Uh, maybe even Ricky Stewart, but Laurie Daly for sure, he's gone with club combinations. He can't... Like, imagine imagine Queensland picking their house combination based off the fact that they had to play for the same team. Now, it's hard to make the comparison because obviously a lot less a lot less clubs with, like, Queensland, but imagine, say... Let, let, let's, let's use the Hammer, for example. So that they've put in the Hammer, they've dropped Dan Gagai. Imagine, like, this, this would be the New South Wales logic. Oh, well, we've got the hammer. He's playing out of position, normally plays fullback. Uh, we're going to chuck him in the centers. We need someone to pair up with him that uh, he, he plays his club footy with to make him comfortable. Um, let's chuck in Bronco Lee. He, he's played for State of Origin. He's played for Queensland, you know. Let's chuck them. Let's chuck them on an edge together. Queensland wouldn't do it. Queensland would say, all right, this guy's our best center. We're going to pick him in the center. This guy's our best swinger. We're going to chuck him there. They don't look at their side and go, oh, well, that guy, these guys have played 10 to 15 games together. Uh, you know, they won a premiership or, you know, they, they've been pretty good playing for, for X and X club together. Maybe we need them as a combination. No, they just straight up pick their best team. And if they play for the same team, so be it. The club combinations mean absolutely nothing. And New South Wales have proven that time and time again. So it's time to get away from that. It's time to start picking our best guys. Pick guys who are in form. And, and, you know, obviously you can take a punt here and there on guys who've been there and done it. Or someone who you think has potential. But this whole... We've got to pick Coruscant because he used to play for Penrith. We've got to pick Isaiah Yo because he's the link man for Penrith. Uh, you know, we've got to have the cl the combinations of Crichton and Toya together. You've got Tom Jabrivich who does his best work down the left. You've got um, Josh Adekar who plays on the left. Um, let's chuck them on the right. Let's put Crichton who plays on the right normally. Uh, let's have Ryan Toya who plays on the right normally, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's swap them over. All the back rowers, let's swap their, their, uh, their edges. Let's just, like, we'll, we'll pick combinations and then put them in, like, completely different spots. Um, that just seems to be the Brad Fittler way. Um, he is a moron uh, in terms of coaching. We all know that. I'm getting very fired up here. Um, Brad Fittler, great player, terrible coach. In sports in general, you know, sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. And Brad Fittler is someone who is not a good coach. In the NRL, he wasn't a good coach. For state of origin level for New South Wales, he's not a good coach. It's as simple as that. I don't have the answers on who you should chuck in there. I don't even have the answers on, you know, who you should drop, who you should retain, how they should play, all that sort of stuff. But how they've been playing has not worked. And they keep trying this same, same old shit every year. And in fact, instead of going away from it, they've increased it. They've chucked in Coruscant there. They get rid of Damien Cook, who's in arguably the best form of his career. And, um... Look, we paid the price for it. We paid the price big time. Anyways, I'm just rambling here. Um, you can kind of tell I'm very passionate at the moment. Um, I thought about this all morning, thought about it all night, and I thought I just I just film it while it's while it's still fresh in my mind. And there's probably a lot of other points I could have touched on. But guys, let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on the New South Wales side? Are they in shambles? Do you think Latrell coming in saves the day? I will say Latrell could easily come in next game, go absolutely bonkers on Queensland, and you know win the game, or whatever. But that doesn't change the fact that this side is poorly coached and, and you know, executes poorly in key moments and just, just moments in general. Not even just key moments, they just don't execute at all. Um, I just, I think it's a very, very poor side. Um, and, you know, I don't even, I don't think it's particularly the player's fault. I think it's sort of a lot higher up. But that's just my thoughts. And, and like I said, let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on the New South Wales side. Queensland fans, um, you know, they've always said New South Wales just don't get origin. And, you know, I've kind of defending them and said, you know, no, it's just, it's different. I mean, Andrew John's come out and said it. We, we care as much as what Queensland does. It's just in terms of selections and, and how it's run, I guess Queensland are just, 
that it's run a lot better in my opinion. It's, it's kind of like you look at like systems like the Melbourne Storm and all that sort of stuff. Some teams and some clubs it does run better than others. And New South Wales, in my opinion, is running very poorly. Um, it's a lot of, you know, buddy system. You know, if that person's friends with this person, they'll pick from set clubs, Roosters and, and you know, Penrith, they pick from select few clubs. Um, Queensland just wouldn't do that stuff. And um, I think we all know that. And We've, we've known it for years, but it's just very evident right now. But um, look, if you happen to enjoy this video, I didn't quite enjoy State of Origin, but if you happen to enjoy this video, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We're on the road to 15,000 subscribers. Hopefully we can hit it very, very soon. Uh, the more likes, the better as well. So if you leave a like on the video, it just increases the viewership. It gets, I don't know, must something with algorithms and that sort of stuff. Just leave a like on it and be very much appreciated as well as a comment, just any sort of interaction in general. Also, if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can go ahead and become a member. You're seeing all the members on the screen right now. Thank you for sticking with me. I've uh, been trying to upload as much as possible and you guys are a huge motivation to, you know, keep streaming, keep making videos. So shout out to you guys. Shout out to the super chatters. Uh, Techno being going ham as of late. So uh, thanks to everybody who's super chatted and who's become a member. Also, go ahead and chuck me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke on YT. Um, it's my Twitter, Instagram, like TikTok, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's all on the screen. Um, just give me a follow, give me an ad, and I'm gonna wrap things up here. Back to the normal content, back to your Oblique Live 4 content. But um, look, this video had to be made, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.